What is a dromeda? Hmm. That, my friend, is a good question. Um, it's not Andromeda, no. which is a galaxy. No. So I, I don't know. If I heard that word for the first time or read that word for the first time, I would think, well, it's is it audio based? Is it right theatrical? There's because there's drama in the middle. Yeah, which could also just be life and relationships. Um, and is it? And also, does it pertain to slow witted people? Because there's duh <laughs> on the end. <laughs> it's actually D A. It's not D U H. So yes. Yeah. Um, you know that's <clears throat> interesting. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people have asked what yeah. this is all about, and also. When they find out that you and I are working together, they're, uh, first of all, they think it's interesting that two people that um, play rival, <laughs> rival characters in the, right, right. In, the, in, the, in the cartoon world are actually close friends and <laughs> creative partners. Hey, we're, we're not the Rock and Vin Diesel here. We're, <laughs> it's right. We're, <laughs> it's right. It's a different energy. But I think that's an yeah. interesting question. I, I, I think having the, uh, the opportunity to maybe go into that and explain a little bit might um, it just might answer some questions from the fan base or anybody else who's even curious about that but also maybe when they hear why and what we're doing they might be inspired to do something on their own as well welcome to the heart of the cards a conversation about creativity inspiration and dealing with what we're dealt hey this is Dan Green and Eric Stewart and this is episode 20 of The Heart of the Cards, a drama and what that's all about. How much do you like working on a drama Hmm. Well, I would say personally, as someone who in the majority of my career has worked either with or for other people, um, yeah. Obviously, with my music, I'm my own boss. Um, right. But but with the voiceover work and and production and and directing, um, even if I'm in a senior position, I have always reported to someone else and dealt with their creative choices or their in quotes creative choices end quote. Um, and having an opportunity to work on something that is hours um yes. even though it's um it's not so much a uh um there's there's not a hierarchy though a lot of the uh concepts come from you um which i appreciate um the <laughs> the, the partnership makes it feel like um we can be uh creative but we can also give good um, constructive criticism and try to shape things the way that two people who are both fans of these things that we enjoy working on for other people, but also we see things um, as producers, as directors, as writers, as whatever. We see things from that fan perspective. And I think um, there are times where I would have loved to have spoken up and said this or maybe <laughs> you know me well you probably know that I probably did speak up but um <laughs> just just to be able to call it our own um and also right. uh, the addition to that's, that is that's yeah. the answer I was looking for <laughs> yeah and the, but the other side of it is so and I, maybe I'm contradicting myself by saying this but with my music I am the boss I am the right. I am the one I'm the songwriter you know I get input and I get uh, yeah, you know, it's all on you, though. But there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of camaraderie and there's a lot of input from the other musicians. And but at the end of the day, like that's my band or my project. What mm-hmm. I really enjoy about this uh, concept, Andromeda, and working alongside you is that I don't have to come up with this starter, whether it's our mm-hmm. conversation for the podcast or whether it is uh, an idea. Um, mm-hmm. not that I don't have them, but I enjoy, I enjoy the, the, the change up. I enjoy, mm-hmm. Hey, this is an idea that Dan has. Oh, that's kind of cool. Or this is another idea that Dan has. You know what? 
um, I'm not feeling that one as much. And but mm-hmm. it's like you present me with different flavors all the and time. And I have never forgiven you for that response. <laughs> well, that one show I do was really terrible. <laughs> that one but but was, but it's horrible. It is nice. It is nice to have a balance in a production company um, where I don't feel like I have to come up with the idea to feel like my opinion matters. And I feel like you don't have to, um, you know, uh, make it perfect before you present it to me because I'm going to shoot it down before we even discuss or absorb the concept. And it's like songwriting. It's like co-writing. It's like, you know, there's a safety uh, in our creativity, in our in our world, where mm-hmm. you can share an idea with me in rough form, not not feeling the pressure of it being perfect at that moment, because I'm going to give you an honest opinion, but I'm also not going to expect it to be shiny and ready to be marketed immediately. So uh, I I enjoy that arena. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's my answer. Um, what does Andromeda mean to you and what does it make you feel? <laughs> so yes to a lot of the things you were, or same, as the kids say, uh, to a lot of the things that you were saying <laughs> just now. Of course, I, you know, I don't have that background of being the, the head of a band. Right. right. Um, but uh, for me, Andromeda meant taking initiative, means uh, giving permission. Andromeda means something that, I can really put myself into and express myself through Mm -hmm. as a creative, not just like, (laughs) I have this blog. Do you remember what blogs are? (laughs) You write about yourself and your opinions. Um, Not that there's anything wrong with that. I just dissed everybody with a blog. My apologies. But you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I do. um, And I am definitely one of those people who have always had ideas and characters stirring within them. I don't think I'm unique in that way. I think mm-hmm. lots of people have have those kinds of thoughts. And those are literally my favorite toys. They're ever-reliable means of distraction and sometimes a means of getting at something that is uh, meaningful. So it's not simply uh, something to pass the time. Um, and I've a bunch of ideas from when I was younger, some of which didn't suck. And so those have stayed around for a long time. And I am really looking forward to keeping this creative envelope pushing outward and outward. Um, When we first started with the idea of Adromeda Productions, we had a very specific project in mind. Mm -hmm. And it's gone beyond that uh, in, in some really fulfilling and unexpected ways. The uh, the first project that we thought we were going to have well completed by now, although under much different circumstances and mm-hmm. on much different production terms, um, is Crossing the Gods. And Crossing the Gods, and it was you and Anthony Hayden Salerno yep. uh, and, and I, uh, we were uh, wanting to put together this re- reunion of well-loved voiceover performers from shows that were popular. These people are also our friends. We kind of wanted to get the band back together. It was shortly after Dark Side of Dimensions yep. was released. We felt like we had a little swell, right? And a bit of a, just a reunion because we all worked on something together again for the first time in a long time. So we knew that we wanted to do something like that, but we didn't know what the idea would be. And I had one of these ideas in my back pocket because, as I mentioned, I, I have had a lifetime of ideas. I'm not saying they're all good ones, <laughs> but I do have a very cluttered imagination. Mm-hmm. And it and this was a concept I had developed, um, I guess, in the, like 2005, somewhere in there. Um, and because I was wanting to pitch animated series concepts to studios and and make animated shows, because I thought that was an amazing way to live your life. Mm-hmm. And, and, and working at four kids at the time, they were a studio who made the Ninja Turtles right. and other shows. So right. there was a sense that I wasn't that far away from people who made that happen. You know, of course, the idea would have to be compelling enough, um, but that's always the challenge. 
So I felt I had, you know, perhaps an advantage in that in that positioning, right? Um, even if only to be around people who make the stuff and they could give me great feedback as to why this doesn't work and what you can improve and, you know, that sort of a thing. I, I just find the process itself uh, really gratifying. Yeah. And, so and, anyway. and just to, 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 uh, to touch on what you yeah. just mentioned, the, the majority of the shows that we worked on were all uh, adaptations, all uh, matching lip flap. And, Correct. Um, Correct. And so the picture's already done. But there was Viva Pinata. Right. There but, was yes, but, the Turtles. Right, but yeah, right. And Turtles and Viva Pinata were two prelay shows that we were producing. So that really, I think, also probably helped inspire you to think, oh, um, because it wouldn't be this, uh, having to, you know, import a show from well, another country. This I, was, hey. I mentioned I, mentioned I, I recorded that series uh, as Odysseus. That that's never right. That's right. Completed, but I, I knew how much fun Prelay could be. Yeah, and you Hell also yeah. knew um, sometimes that not every script that we were doing, I mean, Viva Pinata was hilarious, but uh, not every script maybe was also at the level that, I think that you could bring to it. And I'm saying that, not you. Well, that's you very you don't have to say that. I'm saying that that's because, because I, I, I also think that that is also somewhere uh, in the incentive is like, hey, if this can get put together, even though it might be an existing property um, mm-hmm. at this level, I think I can do this too, if not take it to another level. Anyway, that's what yeah. I wanted to point yeah. out that we had we, a small percentage of the shows we worked on were created from scratch. At the time, I had a bunch of ideas that I knew wouldn't be appropriate for kids' animated series. Um, and, and I created an idea that I thought would be more appropriate for that. And that's what, that, that, those were the bare bones. Mm-hmm. And actually, not so bare bones. It was, it was a fully developed concept. But that's largely uh, what the characters in Crossing the Gods are, are from. Right. I mean, the, the, the same names, the same uh, relationships, essentially the same abilities. Um, it's just that instead of having the tonality for 12-year-olds uh, back in 2005, it got switched to, no, this is like, um, has the reality of a PG-13 movie for adults, and it has the look of comics from the 50s, mm-hmm. uh, the black and white stuff. And uh being able to treat the characters with that level of maturity, right, that level of development and nuance and layered uh, elements to them and and that sort of a thing really opened up my uh, interest, my, crea- my creative expression through them, right? Yes. Not to say that there's anything wrong with shows that are for 12 year olds right but um, but what is more interesting to me is is the tone I just described. So, yeah, and <laughs> we, we I, I wrote the script in, in like six or seven months, mm-hmm. and which was, and it's, um, the rec- we've, we've rec- rec- recorded everybody, and you put the, the voices together, you did a, a preliminary edit, just so we could hear how things sounded uh, mm-hmm. off of each other, and the runtime for that is a little over two hours, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and that's wall-to-wall talking. Mm-hmm. Right, that's not even accounting for the visual element of the storytelling. So anyway, yeah, that's a that's a fair amount of material, and the actors sounded great. I don't know if, how much time we want to get into that. Well, but, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, you know, so, something just for the for the listeners to just wrap their heads around a little bit is that th- those the things that you just mentioned, the process of that. Is to me also so interesting because well, and I didn't write it by myself. You were and 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 Anthony were a tremendous sounding board. That's what I was. That's what I was going to just bring up is that so as as the scriptwriter, you're writing this story, but you also were in that safe space where you would be able to say, "Hey guys, give me some feedback as I'm going along." Right. Because we also mm-hmm. understood yep. the overall story so that it wasn't like, well, where are you going with this? Right. We knew where you right, were going. Right. Um, you, you were just right. you know, stopping along the way to go. So is it making sense? It, you know, what 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 could you guys put, you know, tell me? And it wasn't like, mm-hmm. you know, we didn't feel compelled to always have to give you an opinion just to give you an opinion. If it was working, it was working. If right, there was something right. that we wanted to give you as maybe some sort of suggestion, great. But we also didn't feel like you always had to take that and say, well, these guys must be right. But that creative process was interesting to me. And real, I felt it was so generous to me. Well, it was just interesting because I, 
as a as a not as a, a story writer, but as a songwriter who tells stories in, in music, the same sort of thing. But um, to let someone else structure or help guide you in the creative thought process is very giving, is very open. Um, yes. That is not something that I can say I know a lot of people who are, would be comfortable doing. Um, I agree. I agree. You know, I I don't like to share my my rough ideas of, of lyrics until they're ready. Um because I have placeholders in there or I have I have things that are the concept, but that's not really the way I want to say it. And some people will t- look at that and take it literally. Be like, well, that, why are you saying it like that? That's a dumb way to say it. And it's mm. like, well, first mm-hmm. of all, don't ever say that to someone who's sh- showing you their creative work. Um, but the other thing is uh, don't take it literally. Don't read it literally until it's it's truly there. And you were sharing right. stuff in the working form. And that, and that to me was very open and that was very uh, vulnerable as a, as a creative, which is rare, which is definitely rare because the last thing that you would think is that you'd want someone to um, find that chink in the armor and go, well, this doesn't make any sense. Fix that. Right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but you guys made it possible for me and we had all been friends for so long. Yeah. Right. And which, which I guess could sometimes make that dynamic more complex, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it helped to make it uh, a healthy one for me. Right. And, so you, um, so you yeah. did that part. And then, and then also you directed these actors individually mm-hmm. for those that, mm-hmm. that, that think that we might have recorded as an ensemble cast. We didn't. So Dan directed but each But it, it actor. sounds like it, though. Of course. It sounds like it, though. Right, because yeah. you... You 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 have one director who understands what they're going to ask from every actor and a very talented and seasoned cast. Oh, that's very nice. That's true. I will say that is true. I couldn't have done it. It wouldn't have succeeded without that. Right. But the the yeah. the point I'm getting at is that your ear and what you're asking for from each actor, you also mm-hmm. know what you're going to ask from the other actor in that scene. At a For different sure. time. So the, even the inflection, the dynamic, the energy will match because you mm-hmm. are the one captain of the ship for that part of it. But then you gave mm-hmm. me all of that audio. And you gave yes, me all of that audio and then we assembled it and we talked about pacing and what was going to happen. So for those of you who are wondering how this process goes from point A to point B to point C. So... Once those elements were sent to me, I, I assembled the dialogue and then I sent them back to Dan to review and make sure he liked everything that we, all the choices we made. Um, and that's just the audio bed. That's not even the the visual yet. So creating mm-hmm. the visuals now to that audio bed is something that then Dan did by hand. So just so that they get the idea of how this cake was baked well, of course, I'm seeing it as I'm writing it. Yes. You know, um, some things more precisely, more clearly than others. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. Um, I also love, we did episode one. We were thinking of this as releasing in five minute to 10 minute episodes every how often. Right. And and we were thinking that there would just be maybe a few illustrations per episode. Mm-hmm. And we, <laughs> we ratcheted that hat up a lot. Um so, but, but we did get a, a, a pretty good version of, of the first episode, which is around five minutes long or something like that. Yep. And, and it, I think it was a good proof of concept. And it's not full animation. We don't have any of the tweens, as the animators say. Mm-hmm. It, it, it would be more like looking at keyframes, right? Mm-hmm. Some people might compare it to a motion comic. There are distinct differences, having worked on a few. With a motion comic, you're taking artwork that's meant for a different format and trying to make it in another one. With what we're doing, I'm designing these images to be in that 16 by 9 frame. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, that's why it's a little bit more similar to keyframes for uh, for animation. Anyway, um, but the, the sound design is also such a huge... Uh, level of fun for me Mm -hmm. and um you know being able to get (laughs) the right element of thing mixture of elements for vampirian which is this android-like character and 
Then there's Blacksmith, whom you portray, mm-hmm. and he has this techno armor stuff. He's not a ripoff of Iron Man, but he does have uh, armor that has uh, me- mechanical elements. And um, yeah, it, uh, I just love all. I just love all of that. It's just like that was like my favorite thing to do. Well, it's cool to be able to have an idea in your head appear on a on a on a page. Yes, or on a screen. On a screen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we are we are working on a project, at least one of the many projects we're working on, but we're working on a project specifically crossing the gods where I can see 10-year-old Dan Green reading his like yeah. his favorite superhero comics and thinking someday yeah. I'm going to do this too. Well, now you're you're bringing these these great ideas to life, but you were talking about how the original idea might have been uh, geared towards the sort of the younger generation because obviously, you know, that kind of superhero stuff, it resonates in in, the, in that 10 to 12 year old in all of us. Of course. But of course. What, what was always there, even in the original idea where all of this came from, is the story. The, the concept mm-hmm. hasn't changed so dr- dramatically that it's where did you guys come up with this? No, the 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 r- original idea was still a strong story and concept. So and the characters all had their s- yes. exact same construction in exactly. terms of their psychology and what's in their past. And we yeah. just made mm-hmm. it more human. Like it feels more real. Like right. I I look at what grounded is a word that yeah. <laughs> it just like feels like about, it's yeah. much more of you know we'll meet people that are like well I'm not a big superhero fan or I'm not a big sci fi fan. It's like you know you're that's not necessarily what you're gonna get from this. What you're gonna get right. from this is just that, because those are elements yes. in the storytelling doesn't mean that's what the story's about. I'm I'm going to reference another show that. Uh, resonates with me in the same way, just to give perspective. Mm. I feel that Andor is the kind of series you should use to introduce someone to Star Wars who says to you, I'm not a big sci-fi fan. Exactly. Well said. I feel yeah. like I'm watching, it could be a World War II series. I, You know, the Rebels. Exactly. Like, I feel like that, that storyline is not new. Um, no. Uh, but the way that they tell it, it works with setting up the rest of Star Wars. And um, I feel like that's kind of what we're doing with Crossing the Gods. We are, we've got those other mm-hmm. elements in there, but if you mm-hmm. strip away the fancy armor and the cool weapons and a spaceship here mm-hmm. or there, the core values of these people are what drives the story and makes it interesting to me. Yeah, it's character driven. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you uh, for that, yeah. and that, and you know, you and you and Tony were instrumental in in helping to make those tonal choices. There was early on in the process, we thought, yeah, we're we're going to be using you know uh, foul language here yep. and there. We're going to treat it like a HBO show, like it's rated R. And then I actually wrote some of that, and you guys were like, oh no, let's not let's not do that. And it was really easy to extract that because that was just a stylistic choice. It didn't really have anything to do with what the story was about sure. and who the characters actually were. I mean, there's a time yeah, and a place just... for that kind of stuff, and I'm not, sure. a, I'm not a prude, sure. but I, I also of feel sometimes that's to compensate for poor dialogue or a not funny joke. <laughs> right. <laughs> Throw for in sure. some profanity and all of a sudden it's hilarious. Hey, we keep our language pretty clean in this podcast. We do. Um, we do. And I kind of like that. Yeah. I mean, you know. Like I said, it's not it's not something that uh, completely offends me all the time. But um, no, no, it's also not necessarily um, what needs to be there to uh, to be whipped cream on the horse, whatever you know exactly. <laughs> right. uh, but yes, so, <laughs> right, but, so right. crossing the gods, great great idea. So that's kind of what started our journey um, to and it and it's be it's been delayed by with COVID. People can I'm sure understand. I was you know I'm single parent with twins. Yeah, uh, that was a very that was, that was like two years. Uh, but also we elevated the visual to a level where while it's not full on animation, it's much closer to an animation. And you're doing so, it personally. I mean, you are the yeah, solo so all, animator, all yes. one person. Yes. So so <laughs> yeah. there's that. I mean, I got my my yeah. part of the deal done. 
you know, it took me a while to edit all those things together, but that sure, sure. that part of it is sort of okay. I'm done with this part now. Everything and, is on you, and we kick. We kick back and forth the idea of me getting a team to help me complete, yes. which I think is a good idea. But exactly. then there's, you know, who is that exactly? And I don't want somebody, I have put my style on it, so that's the style I want to see the story in. And that's right? important to me as well, is for those that are um, thinking about being an artist or being a musician or whatever it may be, there's something um, to me that's special about it being recognizable as your own. Now, you could be influenced by people, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I love a stylized presentation. Um, mm -hmm. I had a quick conversation with somebody just the other day. We were talking about the technology that's available to do editing and putting you know, presentations together, mm -hmm. whether it's a film mm -hmm. or it's TV. And he's he's a little older than I am, which makes him very old. Um, and uh, we were is a good friend of mine, and we were talking about some of the technology. And he was and he's been working with a lot of the new stuff, keeping up with the trends of that. And he said, you know, some of these guys can really they shoot the stuff on a phone, and then they're editing the stuff on an app. And and I said, yes, mm -hmm. they they have those tools, but not everybody is an artist said you you can of cut something yeah, together yeah, yeah. or you can put something together but there's something special about an artist who does that and mm -hmm. that's not me patting myself on the back or, or 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 saying that we are but for those that are doing their own thing just because your drawing might not look just like someone else's that is the same kind of character and it's whatever it's uh oh you're not competing against them you are mm -hmm. you are you are creating in your own world your 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 own creativity can shine in a stick figure if that's what you want to do keith herring drew amazing you know stick figure type characters so recognizable his stylized approach to art are you going to compare that to picasso well in a different world maybe but they're both art so your stylized drawing is something I never want to lose, especially with Crossing the Gods. If you put a team together and you wanted to make a different type of animated project where you could say, you color this and you do the line work on that and you make the, you know, the lip shapes over here, you do that, that's one thing. But this specific show, this project, that's a big part of why I enjoy it is because... Mm -hmm. I immediately recognize your style in the mm -hmm. visuals. Mm -hmm. And if you did have a team, they would have to do what you're doing. And how right. much of that on you, model as it's right. To, yeah, and how much yeah. you give up to, to someone who can emulate that. I don't know right. which part of the process you could hand off to someone else. Right. Which isn't to say there aren't better artists than me. Or it's just different. a matter of just the different. style. Yes, yeah, different. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that's uh, in a nutshell um, where Crossing the Gods is. And it's so odd to have this balance of the story has actually literally been told with human voice. Yes. Right. You could you could listen to just the dialogue and kind of get a sense of what's going on mm -hmm. you know and um, sure we've talked about converting it to a radio play or an audio drama as it's called and right. yeah that could work too uh but anyway um th but that was that's the beginning of a dramada and and then as we were working on crossing the gods we realized that there that it was going to take a while and we were eager to to get something out there yep and that's how this podcast came about mm-hmm yeah, I, I think I don't, re I don't remember our first conversation about it, but no, yeah. I, I don't either. I mean, then again, that could be the age thing. But um, I, I what's that you say? I think you know wh when we talk about um, the projects that we want to work on or or the categories yeah. of things that we want to do, um, there is an expectation from two voice actors to do something with their voices. I know it's crazy to think that. But what I know. Right. Uh, but <laughs> we stayed away from that in the norm. We stayed away from what we thought was mm -hmm. going to be 
expected from us. What, you know, oh. The most obvious thing would be for us to do something that's anime styled. Anime style or even in the two characters that were, you know, main characters that we're known for to, to, to have a dialogue. Right, analogs of those. Yeah. Something <laughs> like that. And I think that that's why doing this podcast was interesting to me is that it's not like that. It's not what you would think, oh, well, Dan and Eric, they're going to be doing this. No. Um, and that is just a way that we can use the tools that we've been given, at, that we use for our careers, that we use every day, um, to right. to do something with them, but that's different. That's creative yeah. in our own way. Um, so, yeah, the podcast w- was a great addition to the Audromeda production plan. Um, and it it wasn't something that... F- that uh the fans have really heard much of before they've heard us do so many different voices Mm -hmm. but rarely hear hear from us using our own right right and we've done q a panels at conventions or maybe an interview here or there where we've we're asked questions about how we got started or or you know uh you know what's your favorite blooper or this and that and those are great and fun questions (laughs) but but i think both of us also felt like well we can answer those, but we can also dive deeper into some of the the, the nuances of, of the, the journey that yes. m- might help us pay it forward. I think both of us are so mm-hmm. moved by uh, the interaction, um, meeting fans, talking to them, getting fan mail, or just mm-hmm. talking to people in general. We, uh, I think, are both um, engaged listeners to that. We like to hear the human story. Um, that this mm-hmm. was an opportunity mm-hmm. to... Um, not just talk about stuff, but maybe, I don't know, give something back that's beyond yeah. what you would n- normally hear from us. Or or you didn't have yeah. time to ask that uh, question, or we didn't have time to answer it because the panel was only a half an hour long, or or you were you right. know 25th in line right. to ask us a question and we had to you know end the, end the panel. This gives us a chance exactly. to say, hey, there's more to us than that and maybe something that we've done or or mistakes we've made or things we've done right will help you pursue your own stuff. Indeed. Okay, Eric, let me just interrupt here. So we're coming up on around 30 minutes for this. Do we want this to be a two-parter? Sure. Or yeah, okay, so or we can just let, make it go or, ahead. or we can just make it, you know, it's a longer episode. Because it's kind of like the <clears throat> finale of the season. Okay. So if we make it a longer episode, that means we have to record again next week. I think that makes more sense. Okay. Or okay. or we do a two-parter. We talk about the future of Audromeda. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking Then let's do that. I would I would add my two cents into this part about the podcast yep. keying off of stuff you just said. And then we'll talk about and the then, future. Yeah. Good idea. Right, and what else is in store. Okay, okay. let's do that. I'm ready. That also just gives us more breathing yep. room. Yep. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it, somebody is aided by that, is helped by some of our discussion in some way, I can't think of anything better. And definitely the idea of talking about things of relevance, life-relevant things came from hearing what the fans were saying to us at these appearances, these conventions. And just last weekend, uh, I was in Los Angeles for the YCS to the 250th YCS. It was great. My goodness. And there were at least a handful of those interactions where there there was something... That wasn't just oh, it's cool to see this person. There was there was a more meaningful, a more deeply layered element um, that of significance that was being shared and imparted to me. And I'm always flattered by that. And there was this one guy. He was so sweet, and he started to tear up, and he kept apologizing for it. And um, and I this actually also happened a few months ago before that. But uh, you know, it's just fine for that to happen it's okay to be a human being Mm -hmm. and and it's one of the rare times people will cry in front of me where i haven't done something awful to them so yeah and i can attest to that (laughs) you can we're still we're friends um so 
<laughs> so um, that definitely was a part of why I, I, I think I came upon the hero's journey as, as something to use as a structure mm-hmm. uh, because it, it absolutely gets at those things, you know, those principal, meaningful things. And, um, yeah. And also I like the, the tarot because it does that as well. Um, and I in no way see it as a magic device or any, anything like that. It's just a form of reflection. It's a, it's a, you know, it, it's a, a deck of cards that has a, an, another easily recognizable set of universal considerations or experiences mm-hmm. or relationships. Yeah. So, um, and I felt so much better since we have started actually releasing this podcast because we had been working on it for a while before we actually released it. Yep. And I also live with this sense of uh, dissatisfaction or dread because when I know that I want to do something with my life, something that really speaks to me, something that it makes me eager to wake up in the morning and dread having to go to bed at night, because I just don't want to give up on my day. Mm -hmm. When I know that I have stuff like that inside me and I'm not doing it, I feel like I'm betraying myself or letting myself down. Mm -hmm. And I told myself a long time, I didn't tell myself, I just sort of realized that this is the kind of stuff that gets me going. So if I didn't follow through in some way, uh, that's that what if life you talk about. Yes, yes. And the motivation and and the motivation mm -hmm. is... Is creativity. That's been our motivation for, for every every time we've sat down to talk about things that we want to work on. It's yep. been creativity. Um, That's right. You know, th- th- there, you, can, he, you can feel the honesty in that. And, and, and that, to me, is why if things do become uh, financially um, successful, that's the bonus. But that's not, that's not been our drive. Yeah, I mean, even if crossing the gods, I shouldn't say if it will, it will get done. Yeah, so but it will. I don't expect everyone to like it. I don't expect it to be a smash hit. I just think it. You know, I think it's good in my own frame of view. But uh, like you were saying, it's it's not with the expectation that we're going to see riches for it. No, it's a story you need to tell. Yes, another story I want to tell, and. There are others, Mm -hmm. but I think maybe today, we've been talking for a good while, we should bring this part of our conversation about Andromeda, and and we talked about how it started, where it came from, and sort of where we're at with it currently, but why don't we have our next conversation, part two, focus on what we want to do in the future and how we see this growing and moving forward. Yes, let's talk about the future. That's where all the fun stuff is going to happen. Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> all right, man. Well, thanks again for being such a, a great partner in all of this and in this conversation. Yes, and thank you, my friend. Sure. And thanks to everyone who's listening to The Heart of the Cards, where we are always up for a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you're dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor, and on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice.